What's up everyone, welcome back. It's finally time for another video on the RCF and today I'm gonna to be adding some power. But before we get to that, I wanna finish up some stuff I was working on before uh, SEMA came along and I kinda of had to rush on the more important things. Um, I was working on wiring all my lighting, my star lights, my underglow, my interior floor lights, all to some auxiliary switches and I kinda of ran out of some cable and it was the day before SEMA so I just had to put that to the side, leave the wires hanging, which they're also hanging behind my dash right now. Um, they're not live, I just connected them. But we're gonna go ahead and finish that up before we add some more power, baby, to the RCF. So the auxiliary switches are gonna be right here. Let me get some more lighting in here. Where is this switch? There you go, oh crap, I blinded me a little bit. But yeah, so I have one of them wired already for the underglow, um, which is working, it's active and everything. Um, I have the other switch ready to go right here. I haven't wired the light to come on yet because it has no power yet, and the wires are just hanging all right here. Uh, so I gotta clean that all up, get everything nice and organized, get it all working. Um, I need to do the floor lights and the star lights, I don't have a switch for the star lights yet because I don't have any more empty slots. So I gotta see how I'm gonna work that out. I have seen a couple of different people um, buy some aftermarket auxiliary switches. For the meantime, I'm just gonna do the, uh, oh, let me turn off the underglow. I actually burned my battery just two days ago um, doing some work here in the garage and I left the lights on. But as I was saying, for the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and just do the interior floor lights because the star lights, the way they're wired right now, isn't too bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the interior floor lights to that auxiliary switch until I figure out something later on for all the auxiliary switches together, a nice and clean way to, to present them. So for anybody who has never done wiring from your engine bay to your interior, you will always have in every car a uh, little rubber slot right there where all your wiring is going in. And all you really gotta do is just take a flathead screwdriver, pry it into the edge, and kinda push it open while you try to feed your wire through. Once you feed all your wires through, best to do it all at one time so you don't have to keep prying it open because it does get kinda hard. You're most likely gonna need a little panel popping tool. I have a whole kit from Amazon that I got for like 10, 15 bucks. Or you can try and just shove anything in there and, and pop it out, but you might end up cracking one of the clips or you might just scratch up your whole interior. So best to just get a whole kit. Seriously, they're just 10 to $15 and they help you remove everything in the interior of the car. And sometimes even the exterior when you have those little uh, push clips. So let me go ahead and remove, I have to remove this right here is the main part. And then also this to, cause it tucks in behind it and that should expose everything I need in there. All right boys, since this is not the main focus of the video, uh, I did most of it behind the scenes, but got the wires all through. Um, I kind of need to trim them a little bit, but just wanted to wrap it up real quick. Um, and I grounded them to right here. This is for the um, underglow, which is also right here. And these are for the interior floor lights. Got the wires going all the way around the back into the battery. I didn't wire them up to a fuse box because I didn't connect them to the headlights or anything, so there's no need for that. Uh, got everything reconnected, so now we got floor lights right here and interior, or no, underglow right here, interior floor lights right here. And let's flip the camera around. They work. I got them right now on audio mode, so they're reacting to my voice. All right, there you go. I got one kind of tossed where it's going to be. Uh, let's see, so we got all the different colors. And these new Govi ones, if you have an older version like the one I had before that I showed you guys, toss them away and get the newer ones at the same exact price, I think 35, 40 bucks. But the light is so much brighter and there's a lot of different other sequential modes that kind of fade across the car that you can do on this one. So they did upgrade them, they're not the exact same lights. But I still love the way they look. I love the uh, appearance that they add to the car along with my star lights that I don't have on right now. So let me get this wrapped up. I have some stuff I need to go do right now, so we're gonna cut it off until tomorrow. I'll finish the rest of this video, and I actually have an exciting message to give you guys about the channel. All right, guys, I'm back to finish this video to add some mo pow, baby, to the RCF. But let me let you guys in on a little secret. It's not really more power. 
it's just a little bit better acceleration. We are adding the pedal commander that I bought over a year ago and has been sitting in that cabinet over there. So we are gonna do a real quick installation, plug this in, there's supposed to be quick little plug and play, just detach the, the uh, connector behind your acceleration pedal, your gas pedal, and plug this bad boy in and it should work instantly. You don't have to do anything else. So let's go ahead and do that and see what kind of difference it makes on the road. All right, boys, so here it is. Let's go ahead and try and unbox this in front of you guys one-handed. Simple, small package, even though it arrived in a big box. And as you can see, it is a simple little device. Just a quick little two-harness plug-in. You got Eco City Sport Sport Plus. So it'll adjust the sensitivity of your throttle. So let me get this to focus. There you go. So you have four different modes to get it to adjust the sensitivity of your throttle because that's the whole point of this is how sensitive your gas pedal is going to be now and how it's going to react to your step. So let's go ahead and plug this in real quick. All right, guys. So it is literally this simple. I don't know how much explanation you guys will need for this because it is not that hard or if I can even get the camera to focus, but you just find the plug like this one right here that is connected to your accelerator, your gas pedal. Unplug it, plug in the pedal commander to this, and then plug the other side of the pedal commander adapter into the gas pedal. And that is all that it really takes. But seriously, that's simple. I can't stress it enough. Um, it was just plug and play, like I said. Plugged it into the accelerator, zip tied it to whatever I could find, and slowly tucked the wire in right here. Now I'm just trying to find a good spot to hide it. Um, it has this like little clip bracket thing, but I don't see why you would take it off of that. I thought maybe I would put it right here, but the wire is kind of huge and thick, so I don't want it to be visible right here. So I'm just going to place it back here to the right of my steering wheel and try to put it somewhere where my knee won't accidentally kick it and switch it without me noticing. So I got it hooked up in place. I'm going to move it later on uh, to... Ooh, just pop that right out. Yeah, I'm going to move it right... Actually, right now, since I can't go test it because there's a huge windstorm outside and it's nighttime, so I'll test it tomorrow morning when I take the car out. I'm going to move the wire and tuck it in through here so it's not angled the wrong way because I thought I could feed it this way but it would be upside down so to have it facing upwards and the way it's supposed to be I gotta have the wire from right here so I'll just tuck it through the steering wheel and feed it through and zip tie it again all right boys first time driving the car with the pedal commander installed Let me just back this up without scratching all right we're good so First, we have to turn it on. Uh, you can always turn it on, off. You don't have to have it on 24 seven. There's a power button to it um, right in the middle, hidden in the star to turn it on. And oh, I already feel a difference and it's just on city. <laughs> Let me see, hold up. Uh, change it to sport, up it to four and actually change the car to sport. My tires just burned out. My tires literally just burned out off a tiny little step on the gas. The floor is still kind of wet from yesterday. It was raining all day long. Yeah, no, my tires are burning out every single time. This is crazy. <laughs> Hold up, let's get out to the real road before you hit somebody in the neighborhood. All right, I'm on the actual road. I'm rolling right now at 20. So let's hit the gas and... I'm barely going 45. <laughs> I'm barely going 45. And it's already making that loud of a noise and taking off that quick. This is crazy. We're at a straight line now. Let's hit it. God, this makes a huge difference. This is crazy. This is exactly what I needed. My car was always taking off so slow, no matter if I'm on sport, eco, whatever, when I was trying to accelerate on the freeway or something to 
race or pass somebody up. My car always takes forever to take off when I hit the gas, but that issue is completely gone. I just wanted to give you guys some context. I turned off the pedal commander and I'm on normal right now. And here is how fast the car moves when I'm pressing the same amount of force as I did with the pedal commander. A lot slower. So let me turn it back on now. And we'll put it on city mode because that's the equivalent to normal and show you guys the difference again. So you can hear the difference and I can feel the difference. You guys can obviously, but you guys can see the difference on how fast the car is accelerating. So before I end this video guys, I just want to make a real quick announcement. I'm so excited to say we finally reached our thousand subscriber goal. So we're one step closer to becoming verified on YouTube and making this a full time thing and making more videos for you guys, showing you guys other builds that we can do. Um, but it's it's just amazing seeing how, how far we're getting in the eight months that we've been like fully at this, trying to make as many videos as possible and seeing how fast the channel is growing when we're actually consistent in giving you guys what you guys are here for. So. I'm happy to announce we've reached 1,000 subscribers and I will be doing a giveaway when we reach our 5,000 subscribers. So I'll announce what I'm giving away in one of the next videos, so stay tuned for that. But another announcement I wanted to make is ever since I came back from SEMA, I've been working with a few companies for sponsorships and right behind me I have the first official sponsorship that is done with Vivash Auto Care, our own cleaning product line. You guys can use our Sponsorship code visionary on their website for a 10% discount on all their products This is everything I've gotten right now for my first batch to do my review and everything um, I didn't really get too many car wash products for the exterior just the matte detailer because I want to give them a shot on the RCF After I try them all out I'll get another batch for the daily and use the actual exterior car washing products, but Go ahead and use our code visionary on their website. You'll get 10% off on everything there and I am also working on a couple other sponsorships. Rohana is officially one of our sponsors now, and I'm working with two other sponsors. Actually, a third as of today, I'm working with a third sponsor. So as soon as all those are official, I will announce those and give you guys our codes so you guys can get your discounts courtesy of Visionary Motors. So thank you guys. I appreciate you guys helping us grow. We're slowly one step closer, so please make sure to share the channel and stay tuned. Thank you.